Today we're going to talk about how to build an electrical system on a 2006 KTM 300 two-stroke. This basic premise of this video is going to work basically on any dirt bike. They come with an enough electrical system to run like the spark plug and maybe a headlight. Typically that's it. If you want to make them street legal, if you want turn signals, if you want to run cooling fans like what I needed to do, or if you want to mount like the Trailtech GPS or any other accessories that you need to charge off of the electrical system, you're gonna have to dive in and do some modifications. So I'm gonna show you sort of how I built an electrical system for this bike. Let's go work on the bike. So I'm actually gonna be removing all of this. This is a regulator rectifier that they use and you could plug stock KTM stuff into this like a brake light and headlight, I guess. I bought this Trailtech regulator rectifier. This is a new part. It's high quality, Trailtech makes good stuff. This actually has a relay built in. So you know on newer bikes, when you kill the bike, how the headlight turns off after a few seconds automatically, this, Regulator rectifiers actually got that built in. So it's kind of a cool part. So we're gonna set up a lighting circuit on this bike. I'm not immediately gonna hook up lights, but what I need to do is install cooling fans and I need power to get cooling fans hooked up. I'm gonna show you how to run through and put a basic DC 12 volt system into a bike that doesn't have one. Right now, the stator feeds the CDI, which is um, what controls the spark for the engine, and that's it. We're gonna tap off of that. We're gonna run it into a regulator rectifier and it's gonna convert that into DC current and it's gonna make sure it doesn't peak past about 14 and a half volts to make sure we don't spike and cause anything to blow up in the system. We're then gonna route that out of the regulator rectifier into the battery. So we're gonna charge just this little tiny baby battery. We're gonna run power in off the stator into the regulator rectifier that I'm gonna replace from, from Trail Tech. Run a couple wires to the battery, which I'm actually gonna throw in the air box and just like strap it to the side. Then I'm gonna run a feed out for a lighting circuit, which is gonna operate off of the Trail Tech's relay side, which means that when the bike's running, that side gets powered. A few seconds after the bike turns off, that side drops power. So that's gonna run to the light. And then I'm gonna run a primary line off of the battery to the fans, and I'm gonna switch that. I bought this switch. And it's just a simple on-off switch. It says lights, but it's not gonna be lights. It's actually gonna be the fans. So let's dive in. All right, first things first, we're gonna pull off the existing system. I'm pretty sure that this is just a voltage regulator, not a DC converter. It's not a rectifier. Take note of where all the ground lines go, because you're gonna want grounds to get put back. So this entire wiring system is gonna go. We're gonna unplug, these are the feeds from the stator. So we're gonna unplug those and I'm probably gonna recycle these plugs and we're gonna wire those into the new one. And I think we're gonna put this in the same place. I'm gonna put this wire behind. Now I'm gonna snip out these wires from here, pull the insulation off, prep these. So that's power to the regulator rectifier. Now on this particular one, the red with yellow, that's the relay circuit. So that's gonna be our lighting circuit that's like auto switched. And these two are gonna be the battery and like primary power circuits. Our uh, black's gonna go to the negative pole of the battery. And then from there, we're gonna go to ground and red's gonna be the positive side. It's gonna go to the positive side of the battery. Probably a good idea to put a fuse. I need to think a second about where to fuse it. These two are my lighting circuits. So one is gonna run to the back to power brake lights or whatever else I want back here. And one is gonna run forward to power headlights or other stuff that's up front. This is the ground side of the circuit. So this is gonna come off the negative pole of the battery and provide a negative return to the accessories. I can't ground off of the frame because the frame is ground in the AC side of the system. I've gotta keep the DC side contained off just the regulator and the battery wiring. This is ground. This will be my power feed. All my accessories run off there, and then I'm gonna go get a fuse block. 
Okay, so back in the shop, it's a new day. Um, I'm a little bit frustrated with this project. It didn't work. The statter actually grounds to the frame and that's not really how you wanna do it when you have a DC side system. It's better if the satter doesn't ground to the frame internally and you ground the DC system to the frame, but I'm not getting any voltage off of this thing. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull the satter and I'm gonna see if I can undo the grounding on that's internal to the statter where it grounds to frame. You can float the ground on the AC side and you'll still have a return path and then we'll ground the DC side to the frame using the new trail tech statter. But in order to make that work, I've got to pull this. First thing I've got to do is figure out how to drain the oil without getting it all over everything. And it seems legit, sure why not. Then I've got the magneto off. This is your statter windings. There's three bolts that hold this plate in place, but you can adjust that to correct for timing. The stock timing, there's a nick right there in the plate. You can't see it, but up in the case, there's a, a mark that corresponds to those two line up. So this will be easy to put back in. If I replace it, hopefully the new one has a mark. If not, we can adjust and look at the piston depth. Basically, this is going to fire when it reaches the mark and you want it to fire at TDC. Sand all over. Let me get this all cleaned up. The end of this winding comes through and it's soldered into this post here. And that post grounds to the base and the base grounds to the engine. And the engine grounds the whole bike. So this is not floated. It'd be easy enough to clip that and put it somewhere else. According to the manual, this is only a 40 watt statter and I'm gonna need more than that. This is a nice new statter rewound statter that I got from Ricky Statter. It's very cool because it's wound up to 100 watt. It's got all new components on it, like this little bushing here is cracked on the original one. It's got plug and play adapters. It actually comes with a Trail Tech well, it looks like a trail tech, but anyway, a regulator rectifier, which is pre-wired. Uh, you can see here, it's like pre-wired just to like plug together. So it's gonna be super easy. So all I have to do is slap that in there and then build a circuit off of it. And just like the trail tech satter that, or uh, regulator rectifier that I was gonna use, it's got a relay side circuit. So like for a headlight or whatever, that relay side will shut down after bike power goes out. And it's all, the, the AC ground is already floated in it and everything. So it's gonna be really easy to build a nice DC circuit out of this. I'm very stoked it should be very straightforward and then I can go about wiring up some of the other electronics and get this project on the road so let's dive in and get this satter installed right, here's the wiring diagram I keep getting mixed up between whether or not what floating actually means in this case we're technically going to be floating the DC side ground so these are the inputs from the statter this is the relay output so you've got a ground you've got to float the ground or carry the ground so you've got to go this is the feed side you got to go back to the negative loop of the battery for the other side of whatever you're going to run off of that and then these two are going to charge the little battery so that's all fine you can't see it probably in the video but this thing's full of sand which is weird and uh, so i'm going to clean that all up then we're going to drop the statter in the bike and start building it back this is the ricky statter rewound one see how much more windings there are on those poles All right, regulator rectifier. These are DC outputs, positive and negative, that feed the battery. These are the two feeds that come up off the statter. So they run through this and feed off the statter. That's what brings power and it's actually these two. They're both gonna carry something like 25 volts AC current and they're gonna, AC current swaps back and forth as the direction flip flops. And so it doesn't matter which way you put these. This is the stock plug to the CDI. That's where the spark gets generated and timing gets managed. This is obviously the generator um, statter. This is the pickup, which means this it's a trigger effectively. So every time the engine makes a rotation, which is gonna fire your CDI, which creates your ignition, basically fires your spark plug. So every time the magneto flywheel passes this 
there's a magnet on it. Every time it passes this, we fire the spark plug, which is why the cylinder needs to be at TDC when this thing turns around, which is adjusted. That's your timing, and that's adjusted by rotating this into place. Our DC circuit is going to be this to feed the battery, and this one, this red yellow wire that comes off the regulator rectifier is a positive DC 12 volt line that's on a relay, which means when the engine's running, it's powered. When the engine's not running, there's a few seconds of delay and then it's not powered, which is perfect for all the accessories to make sure they don't drain the battery. And the other side, so you, you need two sides to make a circuit, obviously, this is your positive. Your negative is gonna run back to the negative pole of the battery and join your black wire here. I've run this as a power feed to the front of the bike, so I send that up here and I split it to a couple of things. This one's going to feed the, my fan circuit and it runs through this switch. I'm going to run a dedicated power line off of the relay side up to the front to feed power to the front of the bike, including the switch for these fans I'm installing. I don't actually need to set the timing because I don't think there's anything wrong with the timing. I just need to match this stator to that stator. So it's got a factory mark that lines up with the timing mark. I've set it there, and then I took a couple of marks. I've marked the corners of the flat part on the back to the case, and I've marked here, and I'm using my measurement gauge to measure the distance from the case to the edge of the bracket for the um, pickup. So that's three different things that I'm hoping are gonna help. So I'm gonna pull this off, and let's see where we get. I'm gonna set my estimated mark to be right on, so there. Then I'm gonna check the corners of the plate. Seem a little off, it seems more like it. Then let's take this measurement here. That, I think, is more accurate. So we're using three different points, two marks for that flat side, which again, those could be a little bit off. And then this distance measurement here. So I'm gonna pin this. Let's see, I think that's pretty good. Now we're gonna drop the flywheel on. We wanna make sure that the pin is in place and it's gonna go in that groove. My key never came off the shaft and I didn't bother prying it off because it's going right back in. I'm having trouble getting the bike running because it just installed the smart carb and that's not tuned yet. Uh, I got some tune up to do on that. And so the bike will start, but it doesn't idle. And so I can't like use my hands to test stuff because I've got to hold the throttle open. It's a long story. So I'm going to do kind of a silly thing that I don't always recommend. And I'm just going to go ahead and wire a system in because if there's something wrong with some of the components, like the wiring diagram basically is going to work the same way. We're going to hook up, we're, we're going to run this in here. We're going to hook up the little battery that I've got. And then we're going to build the power side circuit that's coming off of the the relay side of the regulator rectifier. We're gonna zip tie everything out of place. It's gonna be great. Oh, oh and then um, we're gonna wire in these fans, which is this whole other video I'm doing about how to add fans to this style of bike where they don't actually fit. First, I'm gonna route this. It's gonna charge the battery, and I'm gonna route it back to where I'm gonna hide the battery. And I gotta keep it out of the way of getting like smushed by the tank and stuff. So we're gonna run. We're just gonna run right here around the throttle cable. We got moving parts with the shock. We gotta keep it out of that. And then let's wire in the battery. Let's go in here somehow. Make sure it clears the seat is the only thing. We've got to wire uh, another negative lead off the battery. That's going to be the negative side of the whole circuit.
and that's wiring for a DC circuit on an older off-road dirt bike. This system has worked out really well, so since I filmed the how-to shop part of it, I've had the bike on the trail, I've got the cooling fans running, everything's been working great. So I think that's a, that's a success, and I hope it works for you. Hit me up in the, the comments if you have questions. Before I let you go, we make chin mounts for action cameras. We also make accessories, so this is a 90 degree adapter. You turn your camera 90 degrees to shoot native 4K footage for Instagram or YouTube Shorts. We've got a door. Ooh, see a side door for the GoPro. This works on the 9, 10, and 11 now. And it lets you plug stuff in while still keeping the door closed to hold the battery in. So those are super cool, link in the description. And if you break your lens on the 9, 10, and 11, we've got this cool aftermarket lens that will sell you for a few bucks. Yeah, that's all I've got to say about, what are we talking about? Polysport pipe guards? No, that's where we started. I don't know, go away.